Good morning, good morning, good morning. Welcome to another awesome episode of the Ash Cash Show every Monday through Friday, 8 a.m. to 9 a.m. Eastern Standard Time. Make sure you go to the ashcashshow.com to subscribe to the podcast. Go to ashcashtv.com so that that way you'll be able to see us live and direct. Uh, and also, make sure if you're at, on the ashcashshow.com that you're supporting the show, you hit support uh, and make sure that you're, you're, you're making that happen. Uh, you can also uh, go to Instagram uh, and on IG, uh, I am Ash Cash, to see us live as well. Uh, as always, make sure that you have your questions, right? Uh, if, you, if you have your questions, uh, make sure that you put your questions on the bottom, so on the bottom of the screen, um, you know, uh, if you're watching on uh, Instagram, make sure that you're putting your um, you're putting your questions in the question box. If you're watching on YouTube, if you're watching on Periscope, if you're watching on uh, Twitter, sorry, if you're watching on Twitch, if you're watching on all these other platforms, uh, make sure that you are also. Um, Putting your questions in the bottom. Uh, let me just make sure that I have. Where, where are we? I keep because the phone is in my way. Uh, but I want to make sure that I am being heard on the other side. So let's go to chat. Uh, so I can see my chat folks on the YouTube side. Uh, let's see. Let's see. Let's see. And then let me open it up on Facebook. Make sure my sat my 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 you know my uh. My sound is right. And then we're going to jump into news. we got a lot of news. Um, want to get to your questions. Uh, and so we're going to rock out and make that happen. All right, perfect. So we, we rock and roll on all, on all cylinders. All right, cool. So I'm going to start uh, with uh, the Daily Word. Hey, I'm, y'all, y'all, I mean, no, y'all follow me on Instagram. So y'all, y'all should have sort of post. But I should have said this on the show. Um, but I did have... Um, uh, my guy Joe Escobar in the building, be Joe Escobar. Yo, that, that's the that's the holy trinity right there. Ash Cash, Joe Escobar, Sean Goody. We make we make the magic happen. It's not all it's not all my it, you know what I'm saying? That's the holy trinity. Michael Jordan, uh Scottie Pippen, and Dennis Rodman. I don't know who's who. I ain't saying you know I'm MJ, but I don't know who's Scotty, who's 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 Dennis out, out of Joe and uh and Sean. But you know what I mean? The holy trinity. We in the building. All right, um, so yeah, so I should have said this um, on the show, and I didn't. Um, so hopefully you're on my email list. Hopefully you you uh, were able to get a copy of the book um, via um, my Instagram. But I, I did have 200 copies of my book, um, uh, Making Sense of Kanye. So Making Sense of Kanye, Spiritual Guide to Financial Freedom, uh, Peace, Hope, and Happiness, Peace, Love, and Happiness. Um, and it's a great book. Uh, I love the book. It was, it, you know, it's definitely a great book, a, a book that... Um, really is good for these times uh but because uh you know it was uh, you know connected to kanye i wasn't able to sell them so they was just really um sitting you know sitting in my garage really collecting dust and so i wound up just putting it putting it for free um and just told everybody listen if you pay for um you know if you pay for shipping uh then you're able to get it for free and then so people did uh take advantage of it i would i do think and so it, it got it got sold out quickly um but I do think that I have more copies because I do remember, uh, fast shout to Melissa Pena, uh, I remember there was going to be a New York Times event and we had ordered a bunch of books that we were going to give out free uh, at the event. Um, and I'm not sure if she still has those books. Uh, so I'm going to reach out to Melissa because if Melissa does still have books, uh, I may just snatch them from her and then give those out away for free. I think it was like maybe 100 or 200 books. I, I forget how many she had. Uh, but if she does have them, then then I'll then I'll um, then I'll put it out. But what I'll do is what I'll do is um, instead of putting it out on my Instagram or put it out on my um, uh, on, on, on my on my email list, I'm going to give it to y'all first. So as soon as I get them, I'll update my system. Right. So if you go to ashcashbooks.com, that's where you, you'll be able to get it. And it's free. Uh, you'll, you'll, you'll follow all of the directions there. Um, you only pay for shipping, and I think shipping is like four dollars or something like that. Um, and then, uh, I'll, but but I'll I'll so I'll find out from her if she has it. If she does, then I will tell y'all on Monday. 
right? On Monday, I'll tell y'all if I have it, and then I'll 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 debut it here so y'all can get first dibs, and then we'll go from there. All right, let's jump into uh, the daily word. Uh, so today's daily word uh, is dedicated to trying, um, and so in 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 commemoration of you know of Kanye West, uh, you know Kanye had a had a phrase uh, that says when you try hard then you die hard, right? Uh, and and it's it's an interesting uh, 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 analogy or it's an interesting thing that I feel like, um, you know, we pick and choose as it relates to the law of attraction. We pick and choose as it relates to universal laws, right? And so when Kanye says when you try hard, then you die hard, right? He's pretty much saying stop trying so hard, right? And you're like, yo, stop trying so hard. That seems contrary to what everything we've been told, right? It's like, yo, if you want something, just go hard. Try hard at it, um, and then you'll get what you got. But the truth of the matter is that that's not what the universal law says, right? If you are a, a, a student of the, of, of the secret, if you're a student of any uh, universal law, it says what you resist will persist. Right. And let me tell you that again, what you resist will persist. Right. And so when you think about resisting and you're saying to yourself, yo, I'm going to try hard. I'm going to I'm, I'm going to make sure that whatever circumstance that I'm in right now, I'm going to go hard to make sure I'm not in that circumstance no more. What you're doing is you're resisting the circumstance. So trying hard, in essence, is actually pushing away or pushing against what you actually want. Right. And it's, it's almost a continuation to what I was saying yesterday about obsession. If you're obsessed with something, make sure you're obsessed with it for the right reasons. Are you obsessed with the outcome or are you obsessed with where you are and, and not wanting to be where you are? Right. Are you obsessed with being rich or are you obsessed with not being broke? Most people might think that it's the same side of the coin. Most people might might look at that and say, yo, I'm obsessed with being rich. And that's the same as being obsessed with not being broke. It's not. Because the universe doesn't understand, don't, not, can't. It understands what you give energy to. And so if you're giving energy to not being broke, to not to to, to being miserable, to all of these negative things, that's what you're going to continue to get. So if you're trying hard for justice, if you're trying hard for equality, right? If you're trying hard for these things, right? The the you know, in, or, or, or or excuse me, if you're trying hard for injustice, if you're trying hard for inequality, that's what you're gonna get. But if you are obsessed with justice, if you're obsessed with equality, if you are obsessed with abundance, that's what you're gonna get. So when you try hard, that's when you die hard. And so stop trying and just be, right? Stop trying and just be. Stop trying to fight against the things that you don't want and focus on the things that you do want. Don't fight against poverty, but be obsessed with and go towards your abundance because abundance is your birthright. You know, you know a, lot, a lot of, again, you know, words have power. And make sure that you're using that power in the right way. Uh, I watched a video from 19 Keys. And he was saying, you know, why would you chant the words of somebody that's being viewed as a victim? And so rest in peace, George Floyd. But and, and, and in all due respect, I'm not wearing a shirt that says I can't breathe. Because I can breathe. Right? And words have power. And if you're running around... Acting like a victim, that's how people are going to treat you like a victim, right? And so be careful of the chants that you decide to say. Be careful about the songs. This happens in church, right? Like I, like I remember I grew up, I grew up in, in, in the church world. And I remember listening to songs where the songs are telling me I'm not worthy, right? Like, like you, were, you were singing, you were chanting songs. That was saying, I'm not worthy. I'm not doing that. Especially because I, underst I understand the power of words. 
And that's why I only talk, speak to his existence, the things that I want in my life, the experience that I want in my life. Why, why, why would I chant? Why would I go to a church? And no, no knock the church, right? But why would I go to a church and sing, right? When you Think about what you say over and over. It seeps into your, 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 you know, your subconscious mind. Why would I tell God I'm not worthy of his blessings? Of course I am. I'm made in your image, fam. Of course I am. And so be careful with the words. Be careful with the energy. When you try hard, that's when you die hard. In the words of Kanye West. All right, so let's go to the news. And so today in market news, man, if you are watching this, this stock market, you are probably going crazy, crazy, crazy. Um, and the markets, the NASDAQ was down. So I think most of the, the markets were down except for gold. Right. And so the Nasdaq was down uh, five point two seven percent. S&P 500. Um, uh, S&P 500 was down uh, five point eight nine percent. Dow Jones Industrial Average was down six point nine percent. Gold is up point eight four percent. You know, uh, 10 year treasuries was down five point two zero bips uh, and then oil was down nine point zero nine percent. And so. You know, if, if, if you know, I, I said this yesterday, the reason why there, there continues to be a roller coaster ride as it relates to investing uh, is because, you know, you have, um, you know, people who are retail investors who are the ones that are putting their money into the markets. Right. And so when you have retail investors that are putting themselves in the market, that's the reason, you know, why uh, it's going up and down. Uh, right. Because at the end of the day. Um, they're they're skewing the valuation. They're skewing, you know, what, what what's happening. And so, um, you know, be careful. Again, if you if you're putting your money in the markets, be careful. There are a lot of um, money that's made during these times. Uh, but you know, there there, there is um, uh, you know worry that's happening. I mean, especially because um, a lot of investors are actually worried. Um, you know, you know, a lot of a lot of investors are actually worried. Uh, about a second wave of the coronavirus, right? And so, um, you know, w- w- when we look at at some of the numbers, like Florida uh, was was w- one one of the places that uh, decided to open um, its economy last month, and then they actually recorded a record high. Uh, they had one thousand uh, six hundred and ninety eight new corona uh, cases uh, yesterday. Um, you know, and and definitely when you think about, I mean, you had um, you know you had California who had high numbers, you had uh, Texas, who had high numbers. Um, and so, you know, uh, the, the the Fed chair, Jerome Powell, he's still, you know, sprinkling hope. He's still telling people that, um, you know, they, there could be a V-shaped recovery. But uh, if this second wave hits, uh, I don't know if, if, if that's if that's really going to happen. Uh, and what people are saying is that uh, when you look at the market tumble, when you look at high cases of uh, the coronavirus or you uh, high cases of uh, reopenings causing coronavirus, uh, they're saying that, you know, opening the economy is helping, uh, you know, the economy uh, take two steps forward, but then they take 1.5 steps back. Uh, and, I, and I know that, um, you know, Steve Munchen was like, yo, we can't afford to ever close the economy again, right? And so even uh, if a second wave hits, what he's saying is that we can't afford to close the economy. So, I, you know, again, uh, I, I, you know, I think that, um, it is um, something that you just have to be careful. You have to use your own discernment. Uh, I'm not going to tell people what to do, you know, as it relates to whether you go out. Because it's not really about going out. It's really about being safe. So I go out. So I'm not. So when I say this, I'm not saying don't go out. Uh, I go out, uh, but just make sure that you're, you know, you're being safe with it. Um, and then also because when, when you think about like we're in June right now, uh, but when you think about July, a lot of, you know, a lot of places are still moving forward, right? Especially like when you think about sports, uh, you know, major league is, is, is you know, major, uh, you know, major league soccer uh, is, is, is looking to return with the World Cup. Um, NBA uh, is looking to, to start up in July. Um, you know, you have, um, you know, the movie theaters, they're, they're looking to, you know, to reopen. Uh, Disneyland said that they're going to open in July. Um, 
you know, you have all these different, you know, different places that are saying that, that, that they're going to open up. And so just be careful uh, if you're going to be around those places. Um, I think that, um, you know, a lot of people are just listening to the news and they're taking uh, they, they're using uh, and I won't say logic mind, but they're using this trust in the media. They're saying, you know, you know what? At the end of the day, if the news says uh, that, you know, it's OK to 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 go or if, if the if the country is opening up, then it's OK to be around people. Um, and, I, you know, I'm just still waiting for science. Uh, I'm really going to look at science. I'm going to look at data. Those are the two things I'm looking at. I'm looking at, I'm looking at, first of all, I'm looking at for my discernment, you know what I'm saying? So first and foremost, but then I'm looking at science and then I'm looking at the data and then whatever the data is telling me, that's, that's what I want to focus on. Um, and so, yeah. And so, so, so that, so that's it for that. Um, again, the Dow, the Dow kind of, kind of went down, you know what I'm saying? Um, you know, uh, one point, uh, you know, 1,862 points, right? It's the worst day, uh, since March, um, you know, on cautionary measures, uh, that, that the fed, um, you know, the, the fed is talking about a second wave, uh, flow cooler says, I don't trust, uh, they numbers. They be lying. Uh, this, this armors guy do, <laughs> uh, uh, mellow mellow says once a virus is here, it's here. Can't shut, uh, the world down. Life can't stop at that. Now I get it. I mean, I'm, you know, again, I'm not, you know, I'm not for, um, or against, um, opening up the country. I just think that uh, everybody should do what what's good for their household, what's good for them, and what's you know, and what makes sense uh, as it relates to keeping yourself safe. Because if you you know, uh, peace, God, ill flicks in the building, peace. Because um, the thing, the thing, the thing about that is, you know, you have to also live to see another day, right? And so if you're if you're in a space, and that's why you got to take care of your health too. You know what I mean? Because at the end of the day. Uh, if the virus is, you know, people have recovered, right? There are there are more people who recovered from the virus than died from the virus. So let's be let's be clear on that, right? Let's be clear on that. There's more people that recovered from the virus than died from the virus, um, and so you just got to be be careful. Like if you are somebody who's high at risk, then you need to take more caution. If you're not high at risk, then make sure you stay there, right? Make sure you start, you know, using, uh, you know, using your your you know your uh, eating right exercising, doing the things that's going to, going to really help you, uh, you know, get to, get to a space of health. So it doesn't, it doesn't, you know, mess with you. Uh, Castor, Castum Boar says, listen, people, uh, people will start flying again. So the airline stock will go back up. Um, I think, uh, what you, uh, what, what are your thoughts? Put that in the, in the, uh, in the comment sections. Uh, cause I agree with you. I do think that they're going to fly again, but let me get, get through this news. Uh, Karen Styles, what up Karen, Karen in the building. That's, that's a, a day one right there. A uh, big difference between a family of kids and grandparents in a home, uh, versus a single person only seeing friends. That's a fact. That is actually a big fact. <clears throat> uh, that's actually a big fact because, um, I know, you know, uh, there are people who do have like, um, you know, uh, elderly people at home. Um, and you, you, you definitely got to be safe. You know what I'm saying? So that's a great point. Um, like you said, I'm only going out for necessities and definitely started doing, uh, better taking care of my health. So until further notice, I will be hosting events. Facts to that Michelle Young. Like I'm, yo, I don't know if y'all can tell me I'm doing my pushups. Yeah, I might, I might come out here looking like a boxer after this joint. You know what I'm saying? So I'm, you know, I'm riding bikes, I'm boxing, I'm doing my pushups. You know what I mean? Like I'm, like I'm, I'm, I'm getting right. You know what I'm saying? Like I'm. You know, so so I'm I'm working on the health, uh, because at the end of the day you gotta stay, you know what I mean? You gotta stay healthy, man. Stay, stay safe or stay dangerous. All right, real quick, um, uh, so Biden, uh, Joe Biden says George Floyd's death had bigger global impact than MLK's assassination. So, uh, Joe Biden, uh, the presumptive Democratic nominee for president, um, said uh that you know said that on Thursday afternoon that the death of George Floyd. Uh, in police custody is having more significant worldwide impact than ever than even the 1968 assassination of Reverend Dr. Martin Luther King. Um, and so, I, yeah, I, yeah, I get it. You know what I'm saying? Um, I understand what he's saying from that. I agree with that. Um, I agree. Um, and again, this is like the perfect storm. Uh, when you think about all the things that are happening, I think that's why um, that, that, you know, that things are happening. And so, um, you know, I, I, I think that is, uh, yeah. And because of social media, right. That's a great point. Um, you know, social media is also allowing the message to spread faster than it did in 1968. So that's definitely a great point. Um, Starbucks, 
uh, is in the news because Starbucks told employees in a memo last week that they were prohibited from wearing clothing or accessories that mention Black Lives Matter. Uh, the memo obtained by BuzzFeed News contends that wearing clothing and accessories highlighting Black Lives Matter could be misunderstood and potentially incite violence. Uh, a Starbucks spokesperson uh, told BuzzFeed uh, that the company is dedicated to helping end systemic racism, but that the dress code policy uh, would remain in place because it was necessary to create a safe and welcoming environment for customers and staff. Um, I mean, I, I, I don't I don't know how I feel. I mean, I do know how I feel about that. I don't I don't feel a way. Um, you know, I don't feel a way about that. The reason why I don't feel a way about that is because you got, you just got to think about um, the safety of your uh, employees. And so if you're opening up, um, you know, if if as she loved money, said, a.k.a. they don't want to offend their their white customers. Uh, yeah. Yeah. I, you know, I, I, I just think that. um when you when you are in business and you know who your demographic is, um, you know when, when when you know you who your demographic is and you know who you serve, um, you know you you have to be able to cater to that demographic, right? Um, and at the end of the day, you know if that's what you're in in it for. If you're in it for business, uh, and if it's not a social in entrepreneurship, right? So like you know what I do is is social entrepreneurship, right? Meaning that I'm an entrepreneur, but I'm also an entrepreneur with a cause, and so I won't do anything that goes against my cause, right? And I'm gonna support my cause by all means. Uh, and so because of that, then there's certain things I won't do and there's th certain things I will do uh, in in support of the cause. But if somebody's not a social entrepreneur, like Starbucks is not a social entrepreneurship venture, uh, they're going to have to cater to their base, right? To the people who, who uh, they cater to the most. Um, and apparently it's not people who support the Black Lives Matter movement. You know what I'm saying? Um, and so... You know, you, you have to be able to, um, you know, you know, understand that. Right. You have to understand, especially, you know, f again, because because the truth of the matter um, is that you have to, you, you know, you have to be able to protect your employees and the customers. Right. And so and so the thing is, is that not everybody agree and not saying that they don't agree with Black Lives Matter, but not everybody agrees uh, or, or Black Lives Matter might incite. Um, you know, controversy and things of that nature. And so wearing that as an employee uh, might endanger the employees. And I think that's their first obligation um, is, is, you know, is business first, right? Don't get that confused. Uh, their first, you know, obligation is the business, but they also uh, don't want, you know, you want to protect your employees. So that, so you want to make sure you do that. Um, you know, uh, you know, somebody asked if, if you own the Starbucks, would you sell, uh, would you sell? Uh, I'm torn. Yeah. So, I mean, I mean, to, to be honest, it's like, if I, uh, let, let's say like, you know, like Matt, Magic Johnson sold those Starbucks, so he doesn't own those anymore. Um, but if I owned the Starbucks, um, you know, I, I mean, I, I'll be honest with you. If I owned the Starbucks, it would probably be, uh, in inner city neighborhoods. You know what I'm saying? Like it would probably be in a neighborhood that, that, that I want to serve. Um, you know, I wouldn't, I wouldn't put the Starbucks in a, in a, in a neighborhood that I didn't want to serve. Um, and so if it's in an inner city neighborhood or a, a, a neighborhood I serve, um, I would, you know, I would, oh, oh, I'll, I'll say this, depending on where I own the Starbucks, cause I can't say it definitively that I wouldn't open it in another area. But so let's say I did, uh, I would make the, I wouldn't make a blanket decision across the board. I would make the decision based on. What, what what neighborhood I was serving. Um, and so if it was a n neighborhood that supported, because I see somebody say, you know, but they didn't say that they, that they couldn't wear, um, you know, you know, LGBTQ representation. So um, if I had a Starbucks that was in an LGBTQ community, then I would, I would definitely allow the employees to do that in that community. If I had a Starbucks that was in, you know, a community of color, then then the Black Lives Matter. I I, w I would allow them to do that. If it was in the non, you know, um, you know, urban community or, or in a city, then I wouldn't allow it. That's just me, right? Because again, I you know, I think that business um, 
is, uh, you know, like business is business, right? And then, and then as you, uh, you know, create business or as you are doing things for business, um, then you have to be able to uh, make the, the, the right decisions uh, as it relates uh, to your business. So that's just my thoughts on that. Um, all right, cool. So now um, uh, let's go to the Seahawks. I ain't going to talk about this too much, but the Seahawks, uh, Pete Carroll says he regrets not signing Ka Colin Kaepernick. Uh, so the Se Seattle uh, uh, Seahawks coach, Pete Carroll, said he regrets not signing Colin Kaepernick in 2017 um, and denied that a second meeting uh, with the quarterback uh, was sculpted uh, in 2018 due to the team's uncertainty about whether he planned to continue kneeling during the national anthem. Uh, speaking with uh, reporters via video conference Thursday, uh, Carroll also revealed uh, that he received a phone call uh, earlier in the day from another team asking about Kaepernick, saying that he hadn't uh, uh, that hadn't happened until now. Carroll wouldn't disclose whom the call was from, uh, but it left him with the impression that at least one team is currently interested in the quarterback. Um, all right, cool. Um, and so, man. I don't I don't know uh, how y'all feel about this, and I'm I'm just gonna put this out there. Um, you know, uh, you, you know, president, or uh, let me just say Donald Trump. Let me just say that for, the, for this, right? Um, Donald Trump earlier this week has announced that his first in-person political rally since March will be happening in Tulsa, Oklahoma on Juneteenth. And the time and place are the attracting a wave of backlash because Juneteenth, which happens every year, or June 19th, commemorates the end of slavery, and Tulsa is the site of one of the worst massacres of black people in the United States history. In 1921, a white mob attacked the black neighborhood of Greenwood, also known as Black Wall Street, as uh, many um, as 300 black Americans were killed and hundreds of homes and businesses were destroyed. Not just were bombed. Let's not say destroyed. We're bombed helicopters. Like, the, it was decimated. Destroyed is, is being nice. Right? Destroyed is being nice. It was decimated. It was bombs dropped on, on, on that town. Right? Um, and we know it's intentional. Right? We know it's intentional. The White House called Juneteenth a meaningful day. Uh, for the president and said he wants to sh to share some of the progress that has been made for the black community. Um, people are angry, as they should, over the president's decision, um, especially in the wake of the controversial comments that he has been making, uh, you know, about the protesters, about, you know, George Floyd and the economy. Um, and I just think that it's, um, you know, definitely a slap in the face. Um, not, um, not surprising though, you know what I'm saying? Um, not surprising. Uh, I don't think it's surprising that he would do something like that. Um, you know, as the saying goes, uh, when somebody shows you who they are, believe them. Um, and that's it. You know what I'm saying? Like, believe him. You know who he is. You don't need, you don't need more evidence. You don't need more evidence. You don't need any more tweets. You don't need nothing. When somebody shows you who they are, believe them, period. Um, let's talk about Breonna Taylor, right? Um, and so in, in the Breonna Taylor case, uh, Louisville police have released uh, the incident report uh, from the night, the 26-year-old Breonna Taylor's murder. Let's not, let's not say death. She was murdered, right? Um, and so, you know, the 26-year-old Breonna Taylor's murder, uh, except... There's a major problem. Uh, it's it's nearly blank. Um, and so Taylor died in March after police shot her at least eight times following a no-knock search warrant at her apartment. But the report listed her injuries as none <laughs> and cited no force entry and only included things like the date, location of the shooting and the names of the officers involved who have who haven't been fired. Right. They haven't been fired. Uh, but they were reassigned. Um, and so uh, Louisville Mayor uh, Greg Fisher ordered a review of the department and called the report unacceptable. The department reportedly says it's it's taking immediate steps to correct it, 
Uh, this comes as the Louisville Metro Council unanimously voted to pass what's called Brianna's Law, which is a ban on no-knock search warrants, and Fisher said uh, he would sign it as soon as it hits his desk. <sighs> Moment of silence. Like I, I, I don't even know what to say. Uh, I don't even know what to say. All right. Manhattan's empty apartments, new leases, plunges uh, 62%. Um, man, I, I, I'm, I'm, I'm lost for words. I'm sorry. Um, all right. Yeah, so Manhattan empty apartments plunges new, uh, 62%, which means that people are not uh, renting, um, uh, you know, in May. Uh, those numbers plunged. Uh, in other news, Dave Chappelle addresses the George Floyd killing in a surprise comedy special called 846. Uh, Dave Chappelle surprised fans uh, by releasing a free comedy special titled 846. Uh, I'm actually going to watch it today. Um, the 27-minute video was released on Netflix. Um, Netflix is a, uh, Their YouTube channel, Netflix, is a joke with the following message. Uh, from Dave, he says, normally, I wouldn't show you something uh, so unrefined. I hope you understand. Um, and so Dave Chappelle's uh, special feature, uh, some jokes, uh, but it's mostly a candid monologue about the police killings of George Floyd uh, and the comic uh, comedic legend. Uh, talks about the protests, the countless cop-related deaths of black citizens, Christopher uh, Do um, Donor and Kobe Bryant, amongst other topics. Um, and so, and, and lastly, um, 2 Chains, T-Pain, Bam Marley, and more are going to perform a, a, a virtual concert in support of black-owned businesses. And so, entertainment company uh, Superfly, uh, the co-founders of the Bonnaroo Music and Arts Festival, have announced, uh, you know, that, that they're creating a new event called Small Business Li uh, Live, designed to support minority-owned uh, small businesses, uh, 2 Chains, uh, T-Pain, uh, Brittany Howard of Alabama State and Bam Marley, Leon Bridges, and more uh, have been booked to perform at its virtual experience, which is scheduled to take place on June 20th. Uh, the event will be available uh, to stream on TikTok, YouTube, Instagram, Facebook, Twitch, uh, LiveXXLive, and Bustle.com from 4 p.m. Eastern Time. Um, lastly, I, I, did, I know I said lastly, but I, uh, I do think this is important. Um... Apple is uh, is launching a one hundred million dollar racial equity uh, and uh, justice initiative. Um, and so, uh, you know, de definitely, um, you know, take take a look at that. Um, I have a, a podcast coming up with uh, Sean Rochester. He's the, the author of Black Tax, um, probably not tomorrow, but the following Saturday. Um, and it was it was definitely a, a great, um, you know, a great. Uh, interview and he talks about the black tax. He talks about what you know the, the you know what uh, is a shiny object as far as uh, corporations and what they're supporting and what the true answer is. So stay tuned for that. I'll let y'all know when that drops. Um, all right, uh, I'm gonna I'm gonna go to ask Ash Cash the ask Ash Cash segment of the show. Uh, Katrina Inc says, "What website are you reading from?" Um, we we got the Holy Trinity, Katrina. So, so, so the news is brought to you by my guy Joe Escobar, two two time Emmy nom nominated news writer, and so Joe Escobar he's he's in the building. So the Holy Trinity of the Ash Cash Show is Ash Cash, uh, Joe Escobar, and my guy Sean Goody, um, and so and so so this is news that you know er, bright and early, um, and so so if Joe is in the building, make sure you know y'all follow Joe Escobar. Joseph Escobar's his Instagram handle, um, but definitely, uh, you know, he come through at the clutch, coming through, through with the news, you know what I'm saying, so salute to that, so uh, all of this news is going to be posted on my website, mindrightmoney.com afterwards, um, so after it airs, then, then we'll post it on the website as well, uh, so mindrightmoney.com, Joseph Escobar, yeah, Joseph es Escobar, two-time Emmy-nominated news writer, producer, I'm sorry, so he's the producer of this show, and so if y'all don't like anything I'm saying, uh, hit Joe up. Don't 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 hit me in the DM. He's the guy. I'm just I'm just the face. No, I'm joking. It's 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 a it's a it's a uh, it's a collaborative effort. All right. So welcome 
to the Ask Ash Cash segment of the show. Brought to you by Humble Be Beginnings. My guy, my guy Rich. Um, I gotta find his website though. You know what I'm saying? I, I, I'm mad uh, that I didn't, I didn't support the website. You know what I'm saying? If you know, you know. Flashback Friday. You know what I'm saying? If you know, you know. You know what I'm saying? All right. So uh, we're gonna start with uh, some questions. I'm gonna start with, um, you know, first um, we're going to. Um, Tesfa, right? So Tesfa, uh, tight, um, is asking from YouTube, um, and, and, and Tesfa says, King Ash was good. Um, I have both whole life and a 20 year, uh, term life. Uh, the budgetista Tiffany Alicia, fat shout, uh, to the, to, to my sister, uh, Tiffany Alicia, the budgetista said the average person shouldn't have term, uh, should have term. The average person should have term. Um, whole life isn't necessary. Your thoughts. I agree with, with that 100%, right? I agree that the average person should have term. Um, and the reason why I agree with that is because the average person um, can afford term, right? And so what happens with, uh, when you think about a, a term life insurance policy, I think everybody should have a life insurance policy. I'm actually, uh, thank you for, for, for all of those who tagged themselves and were tagged on my Instagram post yesterday, tagging a black life insurance agent. Uh, I'm working on a, on a, on a project um, that's going to launch on, on June night, next Friday, Juneteenth. Um, and so uh, you, we're working on a project, and so, I, so that's why I needed those names. Uh, but I think every single person uh, on this earth uh, that lives, uh, that should, should have life insurance, should be protecting their life. Uh, especially because that's the way the capitalist society is made, uh, where you want to be able to build wealth and you build wealth that way. You know what I'm saying? Um, and so I do think that there should, the average person should have um, a term life insurance. But I also think that if you are interested in uh, building long term wealth, uh, then you should also have a whole life policy. It does matter though. Uh, that you understand what your financial goals are, what your plans are. Um, you know, I, I would, you know, I've seen uh, many uh, people who have both uh, term and whole life. Uh, I suggest that, uh, you know, personally, I do the same, right? And because at the end of the day, it's important uh, that you have a whole uh, a term life policy so that you could create that immediate estate, right? And so if you want to immediately, right? So if you're a young person, uh, you, or, or, you know what I'm saying? Like, if you're a young person, because the reason why I'm saying young person is that um, the younger you are, the more you can get, right? So if you're a young person, uh, let's say between 20 and 40 years old, between, thir you know, between 30 to $75 could get you between a million, $2 million, right? And so at the end of the day, um, if you have a life insurance policy that you could pay 30 to $75 a month, and then immediately your family is insured for millions of dollars, if anything happens to you, then, you know, you, you are, you you you, you've, you've helped create that generational wealth that we talk about all the time. Uh, but then at the same time, you know, create, having that whole life policy can help you, um, during your whole life, right? There's cash value, there's things that, that can help you from that perspective. So that's why I say both, um, you know, uh, insurance and style says both as well. Um, uh, one fun girl says, let's keep the focus on the purpose of this show, financial empowerment. When Trump, uh, disrespects us. Those are the day we and our allies must buy black. Period. We will in, uh, internally uh, build wealth. I I, I receive that, but I, you know I think I think that uh, it's important that we are um, you know talking about everything that's out there. Um, and the reason why um, there has to be a balance between um, you know the disrespect and us being intentional is that. Uh, in, in order to, you know, if, you, if if we read The Art of War, and I'm just kind of, um, you know, talking about, um, you know, talking about the comment uh, that one fun girl said, um, is that the, is if you read The Art of War, uh, is that before you enter any battle, you have to know, you have to know your enemy, right? If you know, if you, if you know yourself and you know your enemy, then you'll never lose a battle, right? And so if you know yourself, and don't know your enemy, there's no way you can win the battle. If you know your enemy and don't know yourself, then there's no way, right? And so it's not either or for me. And the art of war. This is thousands of years of, of data that says that it's, it's not an either or. It, 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 any battle you fight, right? Uh, and, and, and just for the sake of being, being intentional with my words, uh, anything that you are looking uh, to attract into your life, right? You have to be able to 
win before it happens, right? And so if I'm attracting money, I, I'm rich before I'm rich, right? I have the money before I physically have the money. I have victory before I have victory, right? And But you only know that by knowing yourself and knowing your opponent, you know? Um, and so I think that, you know, I think that financial freedom is, it's necessary to know, you know, like think, think, think about this for instance, right? Think about if we didn't know about slavery, if we didn't know about Jim Crow, if we didn't know about mass incarceration, we would be fighting a battle saying, Hey, financial freedom. And then, you know, you know, you know, uh, black people still got 2% of the wealth. And then, and, then, and then you're like, oh, why, you know, why, why, why is it that, no, just keep, just keep pulling yourself by the bootstrap. Nah, there's policies that need to change. There's things we need to know about why financial freedoms is not happening. And so if you don't, if you don't know about slavery, if you don't know about Jim Crow, if you don't know about, um, you know, redlining, if you don't know about these things, how can you, how can you win financial freedom? How can you be empowered financially if everything you do gets stripped away from you? You know? So so I think it's I think it's important. I mean, for me, you know, I, I want to know. And, and and honestly, that's why I actually appreciate Donald Trump. I I I I rather, and this is my um this is my personal opinion, I rather a Donald Trump than a Bill Clinton. And the reason why I say that, and this is my personal opinion, the views expressed are mine and mine alone, right, is that at least I know where Donald Trump stands. Like, I know where he stands. I don't, I don't, I don't need any, I don't need nothing. I don't need to know nothing. I know where he stands completely. But like a Bill Clinton, I know what he, what he says he stands for, but then when I look at some of the policies, it doesn't match. It doesn't match. And so because it doesn't match, I'm like, wait, are you, you know, I don't know. I'm not vouching for him. I'm not saying he's a good guy. I'm not saying he's a bad guy. I'm not, I'm not saying none of that. I'm saying that to this day, today, 2020, I do not know. I can't definitively say where someone like um, Bill Clinton stands. But I can say where Donald Trump stands because he because you know what I mean? he's being honest and so I, I respect the honesty and I respect where people stand right uh, and so I, I'll, I'll leave that there uh, let's see let's see let's see okay um, uh, Janae Malloy says let's connect on your life insurance uh, project I'm a licensed like all right perfect so I'll, I'll definitely connect with you Janae for sure um uh, so, so if y'all email me info at mindrightmoney.com, so I want to make sure that's that's good. Uh, Janae Malloy says people need both term and permanent uh, life insurance to create long term legacy. They uh, they they, um, they need uh, the need doesn't stop in ten to thirty years. That's a fact. Um, all right, cool, cool, cool. Uh, I've been telling people that Trump is is a terrible option, but has proven to be a better option. I agree. I agree. You know what I'm saying? Because I do think he's a terrible option, but at the end of the day, at least I know what I'm dealing with. At least I don't have to be blinded, right? And that, that's that's why this whole movement, people are surprised. People are like, no, this is we like I know for me, you know what I'm saying? Like I'm, you know, for thirty odd years I've been dealing with 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 the Black Lives Matter thing. I've been dealing with this my whole life. I've never seen the the, the country different. Some allies, some white people, you know, some people who never understood the plight might be surprised. I'm not surprised. You know? All right, let's go to these questions. So I, I'm going back to, uh, I'm going to Instagram now. Um, let's see, let's see. Um, uh, I, I'll look into it. So, so High Life says, uh, did you hear anything about Trump signing something regarding the EPA? Uh, no, I haven't. I haven't seen anything like that, so I have to, uh, you know, I have to, I have to look into that. Uh, I have to definitely look into that. Uh, let's see. Um, 
what is the first and second step to closing the wealth gap? Um, the you know I think I think that the the, the first step in uh, closing the wealth gap is uh, ownership is a uh, uh, black business ownership number one, uh, number two is um, is is black people supporting black businesses, uh, number three it's everybody else supporting black businesses, right? Um, you know, so I think I think that I think that's important. I think I think that's how you close the wealth gap. Uh, because uh, at the end of the day, uh, but but to be clear, uh, you know, the wealth gap is like nine trillion dollars, though. Right. So let's be clear. Um, the wealth gap is like nine trillion dollars, which means that the, the disparity between what the wealth gap is, is about nine trillion dollars, which means that I, I hear a lot of people saying, hey, you know, buy black, buy black, one point five trillion, whatever. But if we're if even if we spent that one five trillion within our own communities, we still wouldn't close the gap, right? Which 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 is why I say that it's gonna take right buy black sell to everybody. It's going to take um, selling to everybody uh, in order to help close that gap, right? Um, and so you know, and when you think about the way. The country was designed, right? The country is helping the people that it was designed to to to, to help. Um, and so, you know, I think I think that um, closing the wealth gap is a good uh, barometer, or it's a good mission, I guess. Uh, but I think number one, uh, we got to learn the wealth game, right? Because because that's the other thing is that the wealth game, uh, the knowledge is out there. Um, but how can we learn, right? How can we learn that wealth game? Um, all right, let's see. Uh, how life says you got to use Trump to come up. I agree. So, and, and that's the other thing. The other thing is about, you know, because I, I, I saw somebody say that that they, um, you know, that they, uh, where, where was it? Um, let's see, let's see, let's see. Right. Uh, I have saved the ton on my taxes. Uh, so Trump. 20, <laughs> so Trump 2020. Um, yeah, I think from a I think from a business, if you're a business owner, um, you know, so far, you know, from a tax perspective, there, there's been some some policies and things that's, that's beneficial to you. Um, so, yeah, you know, you can use it, you know, like use what you have right now. You know, I wouldn't say cut your nose to spite your face. You know, I'll leave it there. Um uh, we don't need to close the gap. We need to be allowed uh, to business like everyone else. I agree. I agree. Uh, all right, let me just run through these questions because I got five minutes and I don't want to uh, miss any questions too much. Um, uh, AUE Lock says, if there's a second wave of COVID, how do you think the stock market will be affected? Uh, I think that if, it, if there's a, a, a second wave of COVID, I think the stock market is going to crash, actually. That's what I think. I think that the stock market is going to crash. I think that the reason why the stock market is going up and down uh, because there, there, there isn't any um, certainty. Um, and so there's optimism. There's like, oh, there, you know, I, you know, I believe I don't believe I believe I don't believe. Right. There's optimism um, that it's over. There's optimism of, 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 of what's going to happen and things of that nature. Um, and so that's why I think that the stock market is doing this roller coaster. Um, but a second wave will prove to people that they have to like they like we don't have it under control, right? A second wave will show that, um, and that's and that's what the investors investors are moving off of, right? Investors move off of you know you know wh whether people have things under control or not. And so I think I think a second wave would, would definitely uh, potentially not definitely but potentially could lead to a to a crash. Of the stock market, uh, can 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 banks convert? So, uh, J E Sika says, uh, can the banks convert the dollar to crypto without notice? Um, I don't know. Uh, I don't know. You know, I do. I you know, I I do think that the that the that the uh pro probably not cryptocurrency, probably digital money. Um, but I think that they 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 would have to be some type of notice. Uh, prior to them doing it, you know what I'm saying. So I don't think they they can automatically do it, uh, but I think they can do it. Uh, but I think they have to give notice. And I think the the the, the scary part about that uh, is that if they do do it, uh, that may uh, create a run on the banks, and they don't want that to happen. So I don't know. I have to look into that. That's a great question. Um, 
right? Where's Kiss Ravlin? You know, be I mean? the crypto doctor. Um, let's see, let's see. Um, Sir Cass says, um, Jerome Powell, Jay Powell says uh, that he plans to keep interest rates near zero until 2020. Uh, how can we take advantage of that? So, um, I mean, what you know, what he is doing, right, or what he's saying to us. Uh, in essence, is that the, the country is not going to rebound. You know, it's going to take about two years for the country to rebound. Um, so, yeah, I think I think that, he, you know, we could take advantage of that because money is cheap. Um, so if you're in a position to borrow. Uh, oh, yeah, yeah, that's right. I'm sorry. You're right. 2022. I'm sorry. Right. Um, you know, um, if you're in a position to borrow, uh, then you could potentially borrow other people's money at cheap uh, and be able to make, uh, you know, make some moves with that money to kind of advance yourself. Um, yeah, that's how I would say, you know, that, that, that's how I would uh, take advantage of it. Uh, let's see. Let's see. All right. I don't know if I can see this one. Uh, my LLC is titled is titled in my full name as I expect to have number of different businesses, entities, multiple streams. Uh, let's see multiple streams of income. But I noticed uh, you have entered. I can't see the I can't see the rest. Uh, let me see. Cause I, I think you asked this before on the comments. Let me try to scroll up. Uh, let's see. Um, if I can't get to this, I might have to answer this later because, okay, there we go. Um, uh, streams of income, but I noticed you have entered enterprises after your name. Um, yeah. So, so, so the, so the reason, uh, so my name is Ash Exantis. Ash Cash is a registered trademark of Ash Cash Enterprises. Um, and so the reason why I don't, I'm not using my full name uh, is because if I ever, I don't have any plans to, but if I ever sell Ash Cash Enterprises, I want to always own my name. So that's why my LLC is not in my name, my real name, my Ash Exantis name. Uh, it's Ash Cash Enterprises. So Ash Cash Enterprises is an, is a, re Ash Cash is a regist registered, you can look it up. Ash Cash is a registered trademark of Ash Cash Enterprises, right? So my LLC owns Ash Cash, right? And I can sell it. So let's say, for instance, I, I get widely popular. I, I don't I don't plan to do this, but let's say the name Ash Cash gets so popular that somebody's like, yo, I'll give you a billion dollars. You know, I'll give you a billion dollars for that name. I can sell it, and then I can still I can still do business as Ash Exances. So that's why I don't think using your, your name – uh, your full name to run a business is a good idea. You want to keep that separate, uh, in my opinion. Uh, uh, let's see. Um, all right. How do you educate young black folks? Um, I, I'm, I'm, I'm going to end with this one because I, cause I, cause um, I got a few minutes left before they kick me out. Um, the last question says, how do you educate young black? Uh, you educate young black people by bridging the gap between the young and the old. Uh, the reason why in our community, uh, we keep it keeps seeming um, as if we're um, starting over is because we're, 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 there's a disconnect between the elders who have wisdom and the young people who have the energy. You know what I'm saying? Um, and so uh, at, the, at the end of the day, uh, you have to make sure that you bridge that gap. That's how you educate young folks. You educate them by meeting them where they are, but using the knowledge that the elders have to educate them. Uh, I said this on, on the show the other day uh, that I, you know, I'm, I'm, a, I'm officially um, accepted my role as an OG. You know what I'm saying? Like, like I'm knocking on 40s door, um, you know, still in my 30s, but knocking on 40s door. And as an OG, my responsibility is to spark and educate the those before me. Right. Those who are the leaders. Right. I'm I, I, I'm still, uh, you know, in the driver's seat as a leader. People look at me as a leader. Right. But then um, I know that, you know, at some point um, there's going to be young leadership. There's young leadership now. And so what ca how can I do my part to make sure that the young leadership is doing the best that they can do or being the best that they could do? Um, and I think that's important. I think, so, so I think that. Uh, <laughs> Flo Cooler says, "Uncle, nah, B, I ain't nobody's unk. Chill out, fam. Big bro only. Um, but yeah, nah, I know you're joking. Um, but yeah, but I'm, but I'm doing my part 
to be able to to help lead that next generation. Um, and so I think that's how you educate. You educate young black people uh, by by closing that divide. You know, I know that I, I'm not better than, than than like we all the same. I was I was them. And so I'm gonna meet them at their level. Right. I'm gonna meet them at their level and I'm gonna do everything in my power uh, to kind of move, you know, move the needle and, and, and get to that that level. All right, y'all, that's my time. Y'all, I love y'all. Thank you so much for tuning in to the Ash Cash Show every Monday through Friday, 8 a.m. to 9 a.m. Eastern Standard Time. Go to the AshCashShow.com to subscribe to the channel. Go to Ash Cash TV to see it live. Everybody have a great weekend. I love y'all. Uh, make sure y'all tune in tomorrow, Saturday. I'm dropping a special episode of the Ash Cash Show on the podcast. So make sure you apply, you know, you 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 subscribe at the AshCashShow.com. Um, till next week, inshallah and God's will, same time, same place. I'll see y'all. Peace.